Please pray with me. Almighty God, on this day of that physical, baptismal celebration, we remember that you have blessed us with the joy and care of all children. Give us all calm strength and patient wisdom as we bring them up. That we may teach them to love whatever is just and true and good. Following the example of our Savior Jesus Christ. And this day especially we pray for the family of 20-month-old Maddox and for six-weeks-old Benjamin and for the three-year-old admitted this week to upstate out of some hospital. Give us all the wisdom and strength and courage to ask for help when we need help. Amen. We're now about 40% through Lent, in case you weren't counting. To help to suspend a holy Lent, and we'll continue to be a holy Lent for all of you. Lent is, of course, a time when we're called to examine our lives a little more carefully and closely than we do otherwise, to look at our way of living. It's not just a time to give up donuts or chocolate or fatty foods. It is also, and even more important, to add a time to add things. At St. Paul's and in other parishes throughout the diocese, some are looking intentionally at their lives through reading a book known as the New Jim Crow, and looking at our sinfulness in the area of racism and institutional racism. I'm on a 40-day journey with Howard Thurman. Thurman, if you haven't heard of him, was a theologian and a prolific writer, best known perhaps for his book, Jesus and the Disinherited, and for being a mentor to the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. and others of the civil rights struggle. One of Professor Thurman's quotes that strikes me as particularly apt at this time of Lent is, quote, There are two questions that we have to ask ourselves. The first is, where am I going? The second is, who will go with me? If you ever get these questions in the wrong order, you're in trouble. End of quote. <coughs> Certainly a valid question for all of us during this season of Lent is, where am I going? And also, who is going with me? These were exactly the questions that were in front of Moses on that mountain so many millennia ago, as we heard in the Old Testament reading from Exodus that was just read. This past Thursday evening, I actually downloaded from Amazon Prime Videos the 1956 classic Cecil B. DeMille movie, Ten Commandments. For so many of us, that is the memory of Moses in the burning bush. A broad-chested, confident, assertive Charlton Heston as Moses. Moses was not confident. Moses was not assertive. And certainly Moses didn't look like Charlton Heston. Even the younger folks won't know what I'm talking about. Ask your grandmothers. Moses had lots of questions and lots of excuses. I'm slightly amused that in that version of the Ten, of the Ten Commandments, by the way, IMDb, Internet Movie Database, lists like a dozen Ten Commandments, movies and TV series. I keep coming back to that theme for some very good reason. But I was amused in the Cecil B. DeMille 56 classic that God, the voice of God, was reading directly from the King James Version, which is appropriate to know that Jesus read from the King James if you want a better view, a more biblical perhaps, watch the 1998 animation, The Prince of Egypt. I think they do a little better job. Moses is called by God to an important ministry. Moses was not eager to take up that ministry. Moses was, you may remember, a wrongdoer on the run. He committed manslaughter. Having fled to the desert, he'd have fallen into a pretty good gig. He married the boss's daughter. And since the boss had no sons, he was pretty likely to inherit the business. And now God wanted him to give up this sinecure and go back to Egypt and face possible death. And then he heard God's voice, Moses, Moses, I am the God of your fathers and mothers. I am the God of Abraham and Sarah, the 
God of Isaac and Rebekah. And Moses and his wife Zipporah and son Gershon had their lives totally turned upside down. Where am I going, thought Moses? Who's going with me, thought Moses. The way Moses' story is told is given a, a name by biblical scholars, and you find it again and again in the Bible, and I think maybe in our lives. They call it a prophetic call narrative. It's a certain structure. Moses was confronted, step one. Moses, Moses. The prophet Samuel, you may remember in the book of Samuel, was confronted. He was asleep at night, and he heard a voice, and he heard it again. The prophet Isaiah had a more impressive confrontation, perhaps. He saw visions, in, which included flying seraphs. Samuel and Isaiah were commissioned. They were commissioned to prophesy and preach. Moses was commissioned by God, saying, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people out of Egypt. Moses objected and claimed he was inadequate to the task, as usually happens. Who am I, he said, to go to Pharaoh? When God, when God calls, it is quite normal to object, quite normal to have excuses. Well, not me. You must have the wrong person here. You must be looking for somebody else. God always provides reassurance, though, if we but listen. Moses, God said simply, I will be with you. Moses got a very clear answer. Sometimes we don't. A few moments we will baptize the baptism of a little girl, Isla Margaret. As we all continue our Lenten examination, it is wonderful, I believe, to have baptism on this third Sunday of Lent. No one has to be baptized. It is a call. Call to come and promise to bring up a child in the Christian faith and to help her grow in the full stature of Christ. No one has to be confirmed. It is a call, I believe. It's a call to come and promise to renew one commitment to Jesus Christ and promise with God's grace to follow him as Savior and Lord. Calls come in many forms. Some hear a still, small voice on the mountaintop or in the forest or in the fields, or they didn't know. And the varieties of commissions to which God calls us, calls everyone, are limitless. Likewise, the variety of objections and excuses are beyond number. If it is a true call, though, I believe, there will be a reassurance from God. And the nature of that reassurance may be quite surprising. In a few moments, we will all be asked to respond to two questions. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God and Christ? And will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? How will you answer? What will you do with that answer? What is your call this night?